What's up YouTube, Sir Haunts Reviews, I'm Mark, and I'm going to give you my top 5 moments from Game of Thrones Season 6, Episode 4, Book of the Stranger, and then I'll end it with some predictions for Episode 5. Alright, so my number one all-time favorite moment is definitely going to have to be Daenerys at Vaz Dothrak. Burning all the cows to the ground, following up on her words, saying that if you don't want to follow me, I'll kill you. She burns them alive, which is, in my opinion, it, it just further shows that she might get some traits from her father, being obsessed with the fire, and she might become a mad queen. Maybe not all the way mad, but whatever. Um, and we also get to see her boobs, which just is, is an icing and cherry on top of the cake. And for those of you still wondering, shout out to Ace Newman. She pointed this out to me. It's been long enough now where we actually, she's been interviewed. Amelia Clark has been interviewed by EW Magazine, which is a magazine, Entertainment Weekly. Um, I'll try to put a link down in the description. But basically, in that interview, Amelia Clark says, yup, that's me. When I read the scene, it was epic, and I felt like it deserved to show full frontal nudity. And that's, in fact, what she did. Um, my number two moment is definitely going to have to be John and Sansa reuniting. Now, to clear up something that I was saying yesterday in my original live reaction, I don't think that the entire scene was cheesy. I just think that the one line where Sansa said, I was an ass to you when we were younger, I just think that's cheesy. I don't think the way that she worded that belongs back in the time period where they're supposed to be set in. Not that it's an actual time period because it doesn't exist. But she could have said something. She could have just said it a different way and it wouldn't have been as cheesy. Now, that one line does not ruin the entire scene for me. I actually enjoyed it, and that's why it's my number two on my top five favorite moments. Number three is definitely going to have to be the conversation between Brian, Davos, and Melisandre. That was fucking amazing. Like The way that they had the, the camera angle cut is when Brian walks up, you can see her towering over Melisandre, and you can't see that she's actually wielding Oathkeeper. And then after she says what she has to say, which is basically, I don't forgive, I don't forget, um, I killed your leader, the camera pans up a little bit, and we see that she's in fact wielding Oathkeeper. And then it just becomes all the more clarifying why Davos and Melisandre look the way they do. Because Davos actually opens his mouth at the beginning of the conversation when Brienne first walks up and says, Milady, I'm Sir Davos of... And she's like, I don't give a fuck. She didn't even say... She didn't say I don't give a fuck, but she basically just cut him off. Like, um, I seen you... Like, she remembers seeing her back in season three with, uh, when, when, when Catelyn Tully, um, Stannis, and... <clears throat> Melisandre, <laughs> fuck, how did I forget her name when we were talking about her? <laughs> and <clears throat> Renly are all up on like this little mountaintop in their ocean. It's like this meeting that they have basically before the battle. So Brienne remembers seeing her at that time. She was Renly's uh, rainbow guard. So that being said, it was just really epic. It did, the scene kind of did portray Brienne, who's like one of my favorite female characters, out to be a little bit of a villain of the sorts because we know that Melisandre's broken. Um, but with that being said, it was still I still thoroughly enjoyed that scene. It was epic. And it was almost like, yeah, she might get full all of her revenge. And then we know that she'll be even that much better of a Queen's Guard of Sansa. Moving right along. But uh my number four moment is gonna have to be Theon and Yara reuniting. That was pretty awesome because she was she was yeah, she was being extremely harsh on him, but we shortly find out why. She wants him to to stop acting like a little bitch and man up. Like dude she she says, who what what do you want? You know what I mean? And he says, oh, I think you should rule the Iron Islands. And she says, let's do it, basically, <laughs> which was awesome. You know what I mean? So the theme of the episode was really like uh, family reunions. We got John and Sansa. We got Theon and Yara. And we also got Danny and the Flames. And the Flames are her family. Come on. Uh, my number five moment is going to have to be the conversation between Ramsey and... Osha, and the only reason why I say that, I don't mean Osha dying, that's not, that's definitely not my, one of my top five favorite moments, but it, it's more so the conversation they have before that, because Osha is playing her part so well, and it just made me, it just confirmed, maybe not for everybody else, but it confirmed me that the North remembers. What she is saying is, is, it's been rehearsed. She just, it just came out too naturally, and a lot of people were like, well yeah, she's thinking quickly, because she's about to die. No, I think Small John Umber Rickon and Osha, they all, or Osha, they all underestimated how how much of a savage Ramsey is. They didn't think that he would legitimately just outright stab her in the fucking neck like he did. So they're like, yeah, go ahead, play your part. Of course, he's going to want to sleep with you. So you do that, you pretend like you're going to, and then when you get a chance, grab the fucking knife, stab him in the head. Well, guess what? Ramsey's too smart for that shit, and he did it first. But that conversation where she says this shit, like, 
that man on your on your symbols. After you do that to the people, do you eat them? And Ramsey goes, no. And he gives her that look like that's fucking gross. Why would you even ask me that? And she goes, well, I've seen worse. <laughs> fucking epic. So these next two were actually should have been in my top five, but they needed their own category, and that's the two most important moments of the show, in my opinion. Number one is definitely going to have to be the pink letter. Not only did we get the pink letter the way that I predicted it, I know I sound like a fucking ass, a pompous ass right now, but anyway, um, we also got it read aloud with Tormund to the left of Jon Snow. That's literally like shot for shot how it's read in the book. Of course, he's not on a table with Sansa and Dolores Ed <clears throat> and Brienne of Tarth. By far, they are fucking nowhere near him at this moment. Well, Dolores Ed is, but not Brienne and Sansa. But anyway, um, he reads it aloud and then he stops and Sansa kind of finishes reading it for him and that's what gets fucking Tormund riled up and I think it's the most important because now we know the Wildling's going to be fighting. Sansa put the fire back in Jon Snow and we we know that Rickon is in the dungeons underneath Winterfell and that could actually be a positive thing because if he's put in anywhere near the crypts or anywhere in like a, where there might be a secret passageway well we all know that Rickon knows the castle better than fucking Ramsay. Fuck Ramsay. Number two is going to have to be um... Maybe this probably not a, probably, a whole bunch of people probably won't agree with me on this one, but I think it's that Jorah fucking ruined his 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 secrecy of having grayscale because we all know that Dario found out. So that's important because Jorah is, in my opinion, since I think Dario could potentially be the leader of the Harpy, I think Jorah is one of Daenerys' most trusted advisors. Advisors, and the reason why I say that is because I don't know if I could trust Misan and Grey Worm. They might not necessarily disobey. Uh, Daenerys, but Daenerys knew what she was doing when she put Tyrion in charge. So if they do something to negate the work that Tyrion's done, they're basically going against their queen. So when I say Jorah and Jorah, well, I guess Jorah and Tyrion, but Jorah is one of her most trusted advisors in the fact that now he he he's not going to be by Danny's side. We know that Dario's going to say, look, man, probably pull a bear and tell me and say, look, you either tell her or I'll tell her. Either way, you're not coming back to the fucking city with us. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play you the preview trailer for Game of Thrones Season 6, Episode 5, The Door. But before I do that, I'm going to read you the synopsis. Um, it goes, Tyrion seeks a strange ally. Bran, Bran learns a great deal. Brienne goes on a mission. Arya is given a chance to prove herself. Sansa. Did you know about Ramsay? Does death only come for the wicked and leave the decent behind? Who makes a claim? I claim the Salt Throne. Knowledge has made you powerful, but there's still so much you don't know. Run, wake up! All right, so let's see. Tyrion seeks help from Kinvara. We obviously know that from the trailer. But basically, him and Tyrion will meet with Kinvara, and hopefully they convince her to work for Danny and go and preach about the Dragon Queen around the city. Bran learns a great deal about the White Walkers. Obviously, maybe we get Tower of Joy Part 2. That's just wishful thinking, though. Sansa sends Brienne on that special mission, and that special mission is going to be to River Run. I don't know if we'll actually see Brienne get to River Run this episode, we'll but we'll most likely see her depart on her mission. And then last but not least, Arya will try to gain her trust back, and she'll be sent on a mission as well, possibly to assassinate someone. I want to thank you all for watching. I know those were kind of generic predictions, but hey, can't be wrong with those, right? Um, if you haven't done so, make sure you click like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Let me know what you guys think about my breakdown slash my ideas down in the comments section. And don't forget that Jon Snow doll contest is still going on. All you have to do is like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Sir Hunt's Reviews. Real quick, I did intentionally leave a prediction out from Sansa and what she's going to do with Peter Baelish because we do see from the trailer that she runs into him in a barn. But it looks like a rundown place and Brienne's with her and we all know Brienne is her fucking sword arm. So with that being said, I saved this prediction for you guys. What do y'all think will happen next? Let me know down in that comment section. Peace!